F24 was asked to do the presentation film for the final presentation for the Munich Olympic bid to the 2018 Winter Games. Jens wrote the concept in, in the winter time, but you got the job just like in, in the spring. So he had to he write the concept and was like, wow, that's going to be tough to make a movie about the winter sports in the spring. There was no snow, there was nothing. In. Time was short. We had basically two months to produce and develop the entire film. We had an upcoming camera woman with us, Jennifer Breuer and the great camera assistant Max. They did such a good job and besides, they were always in a good mood. They always had like, you know, something to tell and uh, brought good vibes to the set. And then back in the office, we had Tatiana, who was also a big help. And yeah, we were like four people traveling this one month around the world, like Nepal, uh, Puerto Ventura, Switzerland. Since the concept is to have people inspired by sports and through that inspiration become friends with the whole world, it was crucial to be very authentic and natural. So we tried to not enact things rather than provoke the people to, to really have their natural reactions and laughs. But that doesn't mean it was like all improvised. I mean, the whole film was storyboarded and pretty much every shot was scripted out and, and scribbled out. And if you look at the storyboard and see the final film, it's really close to what we, what we had in mind. An essential part of the film is the, is the cast. And we had a casting with 40 girls and they were all really cute and really nice, but there was one which was special. It turned out it is Stella. There was just one thing with Stella. Stella has just lost her two front teeth. So we, we made everything possible to have her made some fake teeth. And the fake teeth itself was not such a big deal, but it was rather difficult to make her show them off because she, she was really shy wearing them and she had little problems showing them and forgetting about them. It is different uh, filming with children. You can't like uh, have every take made like 10 times. You have to do it in one take. And, and, and if she needs a break, if she wants an ice cream, you have to do it. And even though there's a whole team waiting in the back. But then we had um, Natalie, which was just there to take care about Stella, accompanying her through the shoot and making her feel good all the time. Besides Stella, the, the, the next main character is a thing. This is this little, it's called the Plastikop. These were little toys in the 70s. And that's a sidekick to the 72 Olympics in Munich. And we used that as like the magic toy to get her connected with the world. The film was, was concepted to be more the humble way to go out and invite the people from the world instead of like asking everybody to come. It was crucial to include other continents or other parts of the earth. At the beginning we were like, oh, let's shoot a sandboard in Brazil, in the north of Brazil. So we started doing some research and we were like, well, Forte Ventura, they have like beautiful dunes as well. And we had a friend of ours, Brice Le Quartier, and his brother, they live there and they have a surf shop. And he found like five or like four boys and one girl and it was a dream you know to have like such a casting we really wanted to have that people like discovering the sandboarding so we didn't want to have sandboarding pros which you couldn't find somewhere <laughs> Position. <Fuck you. laughs> there was some kind of mystery about how the boards can slide like uh, at the beginning we had six boards and just one was really sliding so on the second day we went out shooting we had two boards which were sliding and we had to kind of put the pictures together where we had two kids sliding and the rest was going really slow but then the biggest problem was the wind it was super strong wind and um, we're happy to have it like a, a stormproof Alexa which kind of made it through it 
the Alexa was our savior. I mean, without the Alexa, probably we had a lot of trouble shooting this film. And even places like at the dunes as well, it worked out very well. It was crucial to have that camera also for situations which were really difficult in terms of lightning, like a shot which we did in Fuerteventura when the kids run out of the surf shop into the bright light. There was like almost 14 stops of difference and there was no other lightning than what was there. But nothing was clipping, neither in the black nor in the white, and it was, was absolutely amazing what this camera was able to do. In regard of the, the, uh, the filming in, in, in Nepal, Jens wanted to have a place where they've never heard of ice hockey. Hockey you, hockey, you can always exchange. Always There's exchange. no limit on, on yes, switching. Yeah. If the bow gets hung and somebody passes all the way, and, <laughs> and, and you're allowed to touch, but you, you cannot, you never lift your stick above here. We have a friend in Nepal, and she kind of, 10 years ago, she founded that orphanage. It's, it's a whole own self-sufficient community including their organic growing of food to school for children, clothes for children, everything is there. And it's a, it's a wonderful place, it's a paradise. And, and Diane, the girl from Finland who runs the whole place, was the driving force behind it. And we sent her the storyboard and she said, yeah, that's possible. So we came there and we were the best treated guests ever. And it actually happened what we planned to do. We showed the kids a DVD of ice hockey, which they've never seen before. We brought five sticks and little toys, and then all of a sudden the whole community, the tailors, the frame workers, everybody was helping out to, to build the gear. It was, it was a great, great, great experience, and like to work with them as well, because we knew that they had such a uh, um, difficult childhood. We were just all happy people after coming back from there. And without that village, it would have not been possible. Just to shoot that scene with so many extras would have cost much more than the whole film would have cost. So. The Switzerland part was originally planned to be filmed in Finland on a real frozen lake, but then Finland had the warmest winter since 1926, so we found this super nice hut in Engadin, Switzerland. The problem about this hut, it's super remote, there's no street or no regular path going up, and you need a super special four-wheeler to actually go down, and that truck even didn't make it all the way, so the last couple of meters we had to carry all our gear. And there was a little bit of snow left once we came there, and we thought, okay, we place it next to the lake, close to that little patch of snow which is still there, that was super difficult because the, the, the grass was getting really muddy and the framework kept, kept sinking down. It took two days to actually build that. So that was kind of tricky, but uh, we were super happy how it turned out. And, and Julia, the skating girl, she, she was just brilliant. I mean, she was perfect for that thing and she, she played it super natural. She had a coach with her, Miss Tietze, which is a very famous ice figure skater. We had a song written for this film. The people from Mona Davis Music, they got together and within a very short time they had really good layouts and we really wanted to have a, a shot of somebody singing that song to make clear that is a connection, it's not just a song, that song is part of that film. And of course the actual singer from Los Angeles was not able to travel here for one shot. We got some great help from, from the girls from Gunners. They were kind of being so generous, actually hearing that chorus for an hour and then going into the U-Bahn and, and playing it on improvised without any playback because the Munich U-Bahn Society has a rule and a law which doesn't allow any music to be played in the U-Bahn. Come and take my hand. Um, I mean, we had to improvise a lot and, and we didn't have the budget to do, use a lot of crane or shot makers and, and dollies. We used the motorcycle quite a lot and Jenny who operated the camera then was, uh, was, was doing, getting really skilled and was really brave and sitting on the back of my motorbike when I was driving. 
difficult to shoot. Of course, coordination-wise, it was the audience plot. We had more than 100 extras there. It's a big location. It's a lot of locking it down with security and all that. On the same occasion, we had to do the green screen stuff because the, the kids from Nepal, of course, we couldn't bring them here. And we shot the green screen shot uh, for the visual effects in Nepal. We had to find some, some, some kids here that they would look like the children from Nepal, which was completely difficult. And in Nepal, we had the opposite problem. His dad is quite um, light skinned. So we had like, who, are gonna, you know, who is going to play Stella? And Gori, she kept saying she wanted to play Stella. If she saw the film, she would probably wonder where she was since we can only see Stella. Everybody was helping us out. They were coming, they were staying, they were running. Because everybody's there because of passion, not because of payment. And, and a lot of thanks to these people. If it's the football players from Bund Kikku to the parkour kids and whoever was there. Everybody gave his best.